What's up guys? I recently brought you a list of the top 10 best Netflix movies of that month. But today I'm dishing out a top 10 best Netflix movies of 2020 so far. I'm your host for this one. I'm Joss Bedard. Thanks for joining me on Top 10 Beyond the Screen. If you are new here, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you always get notified on our next video. And also stick around to the end because we do comment shout outs and they are a lot of fun. But so is this list. So let's get to it. Our countdown is the wrong Missy. I watched this one recently and it was so funny. It actually exceeded my expectations, which was a nice surprise. It's been a while now since we've seen David Spade in a movie on Netflix, but I guess this one was worth the wait. This movie is a comedy and it stars Lauren Lapkus and David Spade and tells the story of a man who thinks he invited his dream girl to join him on a work retreat to Hawaii, but he accidentally texted the wrong person. He ended up texting this woman named Missy who he once went on a blind date with and it was disastrous. <laughs> Missy, what are you doing here? That text from you was wonderful. Seriously guys, this girl was crazy. He doesn't actually find out until she boards the plane last minute, so then it's already too late for him to leave. It's a fun twist on romance and comedy, and I highly recommend it. That's my opinion. I know Johnny does not like this one, but I do. Coming in next number nine is Extraction. I have been hearing so much about this one. People are raving about it. I have not watched it yet. If you are a thrill seeker, then this action packed movie will keep your heart racing for two hours straight or so they say. It stars Chris Hemsworth who takes on the lead role of Tyler Rake who is a mercenary tasked with the rescue and extraction of a high powered drug lord's son from a rival drug lord's kidnapping. He and the boy form a bond on their journey together and eventually it even leads Tyler to possibly possibly sacrificing his own life for the boy, even despite the fact that he would no longer get paid for his mission. The movie has received a massive round of applause. They actually already announced the sequel. It was that good. Cruising to number eight is The Half of It. Another one that I watched recently and loved. It was super cute. The movie is a mix of drama and romantic comedy. The storyline focuses on a high school student who writes other students' essays in exchange for money, despite being bullied by her colleagues. It's almost like her own little Side hustle. A jock of the school finds out about her writing service and asks her if she will write a love letter for him for another girl in the class. But things get complicated when they realize that they are both in love with the same girl. You make me sound smart. Dear Aster Florence, I'm in love with you. Throughout the process, they become good friends and they both discover what love and friendship can be for them and with the other girl. I don't want to give away the ending though with who ends up with the girl. In spot number seven is Come to Daddy. If you were a fan of Elijah Woods in the Lord of the Rings series, then you are going to love seeing him in a different light. The thriller movie was released in the US back in February and tells the story of a privileged musician who still lives with his mother in a Beverly Hills mansion, but receives a letter from his long lost father who asks him to come and visit. He hasn't seen his dad since he was five years old, but decides to make the trek to a secluded cabin that overlooks the coast of Oregon. It all starts out as peaches and cream until his dad becomes very aggressive and attacks him, basically tries to kill him. Who knows? Maybe we'll end up being best friends. Things get really intense and he realizes that he should have learned the dark truth about his dad before meeting him. Google, like always do a background check. Sniping the sixth spot on our list is to all the boys, P.S. I still love you. You would already be really excited for this one if you saw the first one that came out back in 2018. The first movie was called To All the Boys I've Ever Loved Before and was a huge success. So obviously, they had to make a sequel. It's a fun teen romantic comedy and continues the story of a girl named Laura Jean. She is officially Peter's girlfriend, which was always a dream of hers. So everything should be perfect, right? Wrong. Things get complicated for her when her feelings start to grow for an old crush that re-enters her life. That letter back. I need proof that someone actually liked me in middle school. <laughs> Everyone liked you in middle school. I didn't really care about everyone. Teenage love, those were the simple times. 
We are halfway through. At number five, we have Horse Girl. Some of Netflix's original films have been a hit or a miss this year, but this one seemed to be a hit. The psychological drama stars Alison Brie, Debbie Ryan, and Molly Shannon, and dives deep into mental illness. It tells the story of a girl named Sarah who lives a quiet life after she lost her mother to suicide. She ends up spending a lot of time at her old horse stable where her childhood horse used to stay. Hence, horse girl. But things get crazy real quick and she starts to go mentally insane as she tries to piece together her mental illness with her grandmother who might have suffered from the same thing. I'm just really scared. It's said to be a You're real psychological thrill that you. messes with This is crazy. And I Nothing always love her. We are moving on at number four. We have The Lovebirds. This rom-com leads more to the comedy side, but also has a very interesting twist because it throws some crime in the mix. Romance, comedy, and crime. I am already into it. It follows the story of a couple who are about to break up, but then they are wrongfully accused of murder. In order for them to clear their names, they must stay together and work together to figure out who the true culprit is. So their breakup is kind of on hold, but their relationship issues still remain. Did you think it was one of those men only doors? All we need is a name, and then we're in the clear. It came out on Netflix recently on May 22nd, and people love to see Issa Rae and Kumail Nagiani together. They are hilarious. Just check out the trailer. Honestly, the trailer makes me laugh. So this one probably will too. Taking over our third spot is All Day and a Night. This Netflix film stars Ashton Sanders and Jeffrey Wright and is filled with drama and crime. So it is right up my alley. I love me some crime. It's the story of a young man who received a life sentence and spends his time in prison reflecting on the days leading up to his arrest, which we get a very close look at. It goes into details about the years and the different circumstances he went through that compelled him to pursue a life full of crime. I ain't trying to make no money. Yeah, I know you got a couple bodies on me. It is not a true crime documentary film, but it sure gives off that vibe after watching the trailer. It honestly feels like these are real people and stories because they tell it in such an incredible way. The story was written by Joe Robert Cole, who also co-wrote Black Panther. Just a fun little fact there. Rolling into the number two spot is Crip Camp, A Disability Revolution. This film is groundbreaking and takes on the structure of a documentary. It explores a summer camp filled with a group of teens with disabilities who help build a movement. The camp was called Camp Jened, which was located in New York. Their movement forges a new path toward a greater equality, and it's incredible to see these teens joining the fight for civil rights. The film was actually produced by former President Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, and people loved it so much that it actually took home awards at film festivals. What we saw at that camp was that our lives could be better. <laughs> Not gonna lie, really excited to watch this one. Really happy I found it and researched it. Watched the trailer, almost made me cry a little bit. Earning the number one spot is Lost Girls. The mystery drama film is based on true events and was based on the book, Lost Girls, An Unsolved American Mystery. The movie revolves around the murders of young female sex workers from Long Island who lost their life to a serial killer who still remains unidentified. In the movie, a desperate mom fights to uncover the truth about what happened to her daughter and also helps expose a variety of unsolved related murders. Uh, officers located four bodies. What's over there? Tell me right now, damn it, what did you find? It's not your daughter, Mrs. Gilbert. She goes to law enforcement for help, but when they learn that her daughter Shannon was working as a prostitute the night that she disappeared, the police lose interest. So she takes matters into her own hands. This one, guys, I'm going to watch this weekend. It looks so good and it is based on a true story. I remember hearing about the actual case. I'm so excited. Well, let me know what you guys think of this. Obviously, everyone has movies that they love and has movies that they hate. So I wanna hear from you. What are your best Netflix movies of 2020? And leave a like on this video so that I know you enjoyed it. But for now, let's check out some comments from is Will Smith the rudest celebrity in Hollywood? Daniel G. Garza says, so this is the Jocelyn defends Will Smith video. Well, I give my opinion in all my videos. So if I was defending him, then I guess that was my opinion. Sherry Seamark says, who dare to call Joss an a-hole? Tell me, I'm gonna get them. Honestly, probably a lot of people, just saying. Sean Thompson says, I watched Joss on Inform Overload and Top 10 Beyond the Screen on the same day. How lucky can a guy get? 
I mean, if you consider that lucky, I am flattered. Film Insight says, guess you haven't seen what Ellen did to her crew. We very much saw it, we very much researched it, and we very much scripted and put out videos on it. If you go to our channel, we actually covered a ton of videos on Ellen and all the claims that came out about her. All right, guys, I'm getting out of here. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Comment, like, ring the bell, come say hi on social media, do all of the things. I've been your host, Joss. I will see you next time.